This mischievous human kid leaves his alien babysitter completely shocked. Marcus Donovan, a respected human diplomat on the small planet of Chinzuthia, rubbed his tired eyes as he scanned yet another application for a nanny position. Since his beloved wife, Alara, had tragically passed away during childbirth, he had been struggling to balance his demanding career with raising their son, Jackson, now a rambunctious 14-year-old. Oh, none of these candidates seem right, Marcus grumbled, tossing the hollow pad onto his cluttered desk. He knew he needed help, but finding someone capable of handling Jackson's mischievous streak was proving to be a daunting task. As if on cue, Jackson came barreling into the study, his unruly mop of brown hair bouncing with each step. Dad, check out this new hoverboard trick I learned, he proceeded to demonstrate, narrowly avoiding knocking over a priceless vase in the process. Jackson, please, I've asked you not to ride that thing indoors, Marcus scolded, his patience wearing thin. I'm trying to find you a new nanny, remember? Jackson's face fell. I don't need a nanny, Dad. I'm old enough to take care of myself. Marcus sighed, his frustration melting into sympathy. I know you think that, buddy, but with my work schedule, I need someone here to keep an eye on you, just until you're a bit older. Jackson opened his mouth to argue, but was interrupted by the chime of the doorbell. Marcus frowned, not expecting any visitors. He made his way to the front door and opened it, revealing a stunning humanoid alien woman with iridescent blue skin and shimmering brown hair. Hello, I'm Tyler Ravox. She introduced herself with a dazzling smile. I'm here about the nanny position. Marcus blinked in surprise, momentarily forgetting how to speak. He had interviewed countless applicants, but none quite like her. Tyla was breathtakingly beautiful, with an ethereal grace that seemed to fill the room. Jackson, who had followed his father to the door, peeked around him to get a better look. His eyes widened as he took in Tyla's otherworldly appearance, a blush creeping up his cheeks. Recovering his composure, Marcus cleared his throat. Yes, of course. Please, come in. He stepped aside to allow her to enter, trying not to stare as she glided past him. As Marcus and Tyla settled in the living room to discuss her qualifications, Jackson lurked in the hallway, straining to overhear their conversation. He couldn't explain it, but something about Tyla fascinated him. Her melodic voice, tinkling laugh, the way she carried herself with such poise and confidence. It all stirred unfamiliar feelings within him. Lost in thought, Jackson didn't notice when Marcus and Tyla concluded their interview. He scrambled to look busy as they emerged from the living room, Tyla flashing him a warm smile. Jackson, come meet Tyla, Marcus called. She'll be your new nanny starting tomorrow. Jackson's heart raced as he approached her, palms sweaty and tongue-tied. Hi, he managed to stammer out. Tyla knelt down to his level, her violet eyes sparkling with kindness. It's wonderful to meet you, Jackson. I look forward to getting to know you better. And with that, she was gone, leaving Jackson dazed in his teenage hormones in overdrive. As he lay in bed that night, he couldn't stop thinking about Tyla, her mesmerizing beauty, her gentle demeanor. He knew it was wrong, that she was his nanny and far too old for him, but he couldn't help the desire that coursed through his veins. The next morning, Jackson woke up early, determined to make a good impression on Tyla. He showered, styled his hair, and even put on a clean shirt before bounding downstairs for breakfast. To his delight, Tyla was already in the kitchen, humming softly as she prepared a stack of pancakes. She looked up as he entered, her face lighting up with a radiant smile. Good morning, Jackson. I hope you're hungry, she chirped, sliding a plate piled high with fluffy pancakes in front of him. Jackson grinned, digging in with gusto. As he ate, he snuck glances at Tyla, admiring the way her brown hair shimmered in the sunlight streaming through the windows. She moved with an effortless grace, even while performing mundane tasks like washing dishes. As the days turned into weeks, Jackson found himself growing more and more infatuated with Tyla. He started making excuses to spend time with her, offering to help with chores or insisting she join him for hoverboard rides in the backyard. But his innocent crush soon took on a more obsessive tone. Late at night, Jackson would lie awake in bed, his mind filled with thoughts of Tyla. He imagined running his hands over her smooth blue skin, tangling his fingers in her shimmering hair. His body reacted to these fantasies in ways that both thrilled and terrified him. Unable to resist temptation, Jackson began spying on Tyla whenever he could. He would peek through the crack in her bedroom door as she changed clothes, his heart pounding as he caught glimpses of her bare skin. He lingered outside the bathroom while she showered, straining to hear the sound of water cascading over her body. 
Each stolen moment filled Jackson with a heady mix of excitement and shame. He knew what he was doing was wrong, but he couldn't seem to stop himself. Tyla consumed his every waking thought. One evening, as Tyla slept peacefully in her bed, Jackson crept into her room, his breath coming in shallow gasps. He stood over her, drinking in the sight of her delicate features relaxed in slumber. With a trembling hand, he reached out to brush a strand of hair from her face. Just as his fingertips grazed her cheek, the bedroom door flew open, startling Jackson. He spun around to see his father standing in the doorway, a look of shock and anger on his face. Jackson, what the hell are you doing? Marcus demanded, his voice low and furious. Jackson stumbled away from Tyla's bed, his face burning with shame. Dad, I, I can explain, he stammered, but the words died on his lips. Marcus grabbed Jackson by the arm and dragged him out of the room, slamming the door behind them. He hauled Jackson downstairs to the living room, practically throwing him onto the couch. Explain, Marcus scoffed. Explain why you were in your nanny's room in the middle of the night, why you were touching her while she slept. Damn it, Jackson, I thought I raised you better than this. Jackson hung his head, hot tears pricking at the corners of his eyes. I'm sorry, Dad, he whispered. I didn't mean to. I just... Marcus ran a hand over his face, struggling to rein in his temper. You just what? Thought it was okay to spy on Tyla? To violate her privacy and trust? Jackson flinched at his father's harsh words, knowing he deserved every one of them. I'm sorry, he said again, his voice cracking. I know it was wrong. I just, I have all these feelings for her and I don't know what to do with them. Marcus sighed, some of the anger draining from his posture. He sat down beside Jackson, placing a heavy hand on his shoulder. Son, I know you're going through a lot right now. Your hormones are running wild and it's normal to be attracted to someone like Tyla, but that doesn't give you the right to act on those feelings, especially not in such an inappropriate way. Jackson nodded miserably, wiping at his tears with the back of his hand. I know, I'll stop, I promise. Good, Marcus gave Jackson's shoulder a squeeze. Because if I ever catch you doing something like this again, there will be serious consequences. Understand? Yes, sir, Jackson mumbled. Marcus stood up, pulling Jackson to his feet. Now, I want you to go apologize to Tyla in the morning, and I mean a real apology, not just some half-assed I'm sorry. You need to show her that you understand why what you did was wrong and that you're committed to being better. Jackson nodded, dreading the conversation but knowing it was necessary. I will, Dad. I'll make things right. As Jackson climbed the stairs back to his room, he felt a weight lift from his shoulders. His father's words had been harsh, but they were exactly what he needed to hear. He knew he had a long way to go to regain Tyla's trust, but he was determined to prove that he could be the kind of man she deserved. The next morning, Jackson approached Tyla with his head bowed, an apology already forming on his lips. To his surprise, she greeted him with a warm smile and open arms. Jackson, your father told me what happened last night, she said gently. I appreciate your apology and I forgive you. I know you're going through a confusing time, but I hope you understand now why your actions were inappropriate. Jackson nodded, relief flooding through him. I do, Tyla, I'm so sorry for betraying your trust like that. It won't happen again, I swear. Tyla hugged him close, and for the first time, Jackson felt nothing but platonic affection for her. He knew he still had a lot of growing up to do, but with Tyla's guidance and his father's support, he was confident he could become the kind of person they both believed he could be. As for Marcus, he couldn't help but admire the way Tyla handled the situation with such grace and understanding. In that moment, he realized that his feelings for her ran deeper than he had ever admitted to himself. But that was a revelation for another time. As the weeks passed, Marcus and Tyla found themselves growing closer, bonding over their shared love and concern for Jackson. Late night conversations after Jackson was in bed became a regular occurrence, filled with laughter, heartfelt confessions, in a simmering undercurrent of attraction. One evening as they sat together on the couch sipping wine, Marcus turned to Tyla with a serious expression. I can't thank you enough for how you've handled everything with Jackson, he said softly. You've been so patient and understanding. Even after what he did, it means the world to me. Tyla smiled, placing a hand on Marcus's knee. Of course, Marcus, I care about Jackson deeply, and I care about you too. The air between them suddenly felt charged with electricity. Marcus's gaze dropped to Tyla's lips, his heart pounding in his chest. 
Before he could second guess himself, he leaned in and kissed her, gently at first, then with growing passion. Tyla responded eagerly, tangling her fingers in Marcus's hair as she pulled him closer. They lost themselves in the kiss, years of pent-up longing and desire finally finding release. Just as things were heating up, a loud crash from upstairs startled them apart. They looked at each other with wide eyes, breathing heavily. Jackson, Marcus said, a mix of concern and frustration in his voice. They hurried upstairs to find Jackson in his room, surrounded by the shattered remains of his hoverboard. He looked up at them sheepishly, holding his wrist. I think I broke it, he said, wincing in pain. Marcus and Tyla exchanged a worried glance before springing into action. Marcus gathered Jackson into his arms while Tyla called for a medical transport. At the hospital, as they waited for Jackson to emerge from getting his wrist set and cast, Marcus turned to Tyla with a rueful smile. I'm sorry about earlier, he said quietly. I shouldn't have kissed you like that. It was unprofessional and unfair to put you in that position. Tyla shook her head, taking Marcus's hand in hers. You have nothing to apologize for, Marcus. I wanted that kiss as much as you did. But you're right, we need to be careful. Jackson is our priority, and we can't let our feelings get in the way of that. Marcus nodded, squeezing Tyler's hand. Agreed, we'll take things slow, see where this leads. But no matter what, Jackson comes first. Just then, Jackson emerged from the treatment room, his arm encased in a bright green cast. He grinned at Marcus and Tyler, holding up his wrist proudly. Check it out! The doctor said I was his bravest patient all day. Marcus and Tyler laughed, the tension between them dissipating. They each took one of Jackson's hands, leading him out of the hospital and back home. Over the next few days, as Jackson adjusted to life with a cast, he couldn't help but notice the subtle changes in Marcus and Tyler's behavior. The lingering glances, the gentle touches, the secretive smiles. It was clear something had shifted between them. Part of Jackson felt jealous, worried that Tyler's affection for his father would mean less attention for him. But a larger part was happy to see them both smiling again the sadness that had clung to them since his mother's death finally starting to lift. One afternoon, as Tyla helped Jackson with his homework, he worked up the courage to ask her about it. Tyla, are you and my dad, you know, together? Tyla paused, setting down her holopad. Your father and I care about each other very much, she said carefully. But we're taking things slow, trying to figure out what this means for all of us. The most important thing is that we both love you, Jackson, and that will never change. Jackson nodded, satisfied with her answer. I want you to be happy, he said, surprising himself with his own maturity. Both of you. And if that means being together, then I'm okay with that. Tyler smiled, ruffling Jackson's hair affectionately. Thank you, Jackson. That means a lot. Just then, the doorbell rang. Jackson leapt to his feet, eager for a distraction. He opened the door to find a girl his own age standing on the porch, a stack of textbooks in her arms. Hi, I'm Lena, she said brightly. I'm here to bring Jackson his homework from school. Jackson stared at Lena, his mouth suddenly dry. She was cute, with curly red hair and a smattering of freckles across her nose. He had seen her around school before, but had never worked up the nerve to talk to her. Jackson, who is it? Tyler called from the living room. Uh, just a girl from school, Jackson called back, his voice cracking slightly. Bringing me homework. Lena giggled, handing Jackson the stack of books. I volunteered to bring these by, she said her green eyes sparkling mischievously. I figured it would give me a chance to finally talk to you. Jackson blushed, fumbling with the books. Oh, uh, thanks, he stammered. That's really nice of you. Lena shrugged, scuffing her toe on the porch. No problem. I was wondering, maybe when you're feeling better, we could hang out sometime, go for a walk or something. Jackson's heart leapt into his throat. Yes, he blurted out, then winced at his own eagerness. I mean, yeah, that would be cool. Lena grinned, giving Jackson a little wave as she turned to leave. Great, I'll see you at school, Jackson. Jackson watched her go, a dopey smile on his face. He closed the door and leaned against it, hugging the books to his chest. Tyla appeared in the hallway, a knowing look on her face. Who was that? She asked innocently. Lena, Jackson sighed dreamily. She wants to hang out with me. Tyla bit back a smile, recognizing the signs of Jackson's first real crush. That's wonderful, Jackson. I'm sure you two will have a great time together. Jackson's face fell slightly. But what do I do? I've never been on a date before. What if I say something stupid or trip over my own feet? Tyla put an arm around Jackson's shoulders, leading him back to the living room. Don't worry, Jackson. Just be yourself. Lena clearly likes you for who you are. 
And if you need any advice, your father and I are always here for you. Over the next few weeks, Jackson and Lena began spending more and more time together. They would walk home from school hand in hand, laughing and talking about everything under the sun. Jackson found himself opening up to Lena in ways he never had before, sharing his hopes, his fears, his dreams for the future. With each passing day, Jackson felt his crush on Lena deepening into something more profound. He started to understand what his father must have felt for his mother, the all-consuming love that made everything else fade into the background. Meanwhile, Marcus and Tyla's relationship continued to blossom, though they were careful to keep things discreet for Jackson's sake. Stolen kisses in the kitchen while Jackson was occupied, gentle caresses when they thought no one was looking. It was a delicate dance of balancing their growing feelings with their, their responsibilities as parent and nanny. But even with their best efforts, Jackson began to notice the change in their dynamic. He would catch them gazing at each other with undisguised longing, their hands brushing together as they passed in the hallway. One night after a particularly lovely evening spent playing board games and laughing together, Jackson pulled Marcus aside. Dad, I think you should ask Tyler to marry you, he said seriously. Marcus's eyes widened in surprise. What? Jackson, where is this coming from? Jackson shrugged, a small smile playing at his lips. I see the way you look at each other. It's the same way you used to look at mom, and I know she would want you to be happy. Marcus felt tears prick at the corners of his eyes. He pulled Jackson into a tight hug, marveling at the wise, compassionate young man his son was becoming. Thank you, Jackson, he whispered. Your blessing means everything to me. That night, as Tyla tucked Jackson into bed, he took her hand and squeezed it gently. I love you, Tyla, he said sleepily. I'm glad you're part of our family. Tyla's heart swelled with emotion. She leaned down and placed a soft kiss on Jackson's forehead. I love you too, Jackson. More than you could ever know. As she turned out the light and closed the door behind her, Tyla couldn't help but marvel at the incredible journey that had brought her to this moment. What had started as a simple job had turned into the greatest adventure of her life, filled with love, laughter, and a sense of belonging she had never known before. She knew there would be challenges ahead, navigating the complexities of an interspecies relationship while raising a teenage boy. But with Marcus by her side and Jackson's love and support, she felt ready to face whatever the future might bring. And as she drifted off to sleep that night, wrapped in Marcus's warm embrace, Tyla knew she had finally found her true home, her real family. And she would cherish every moment, every precious memory for the rest of her days. As the weeks turned into months, Marcus and Tyla's relationship continued to deepen, their love for each other growing stronger with each passing day. They began to talk about the future, about building a life together as a family with Jackson. One lazy Sunday morning, as they lay tangled in each other's arms, Marcus placed a gentle kiss on Tyla's forehead. Marry me, he whispered, his voice rough with emotion. Tyla's eyes widened, her heart skipping a beat. Marcus, are you sure? What about Jackson? We don't want to rush into anything that might upset him. Marcus smiled, brushing a strand of hair from Tyla's face. Jackson adores you, Tyla. He's the one who suggested I propose. He wants us to be a real family, officially. Tears of joy sprang to Tyla's eyes. She pulled Marcus into a passionate kiss, pouring all of her love and devotion into the embrace. Yes, she breathed against his lips. Yes, I'll marry you. They began to plan the wedding, a small, intimate affair to be held in the garden behind their house. Jackson threw himself into the preparations with enthusiasm, eager to help in any way he could. One afternoon, as Tyla and Jackson sat together finalizing the guest list, Jackson turned to her with a curious expression. Tyla, can I ask you something? Of course, Jackson. You can ask me anything. Jackson hesitated, a blush creeping up his cheeks. When did your people start getting interested in, you know, romance and stuff? Like at what age? Tyla bit back a smile, finding Jackson's awkwardness endearing. Well, it varies from person to person, but typically not until we're much older than humans, usually in our late 20s or early 30s. Jackson's eyes widened in surprise. Really? That's so different from us. I mean, most of my friends are already dating and stuff. Tyla nodded, a thoughtful look on her face. I've noticed that about humans. You mature emotionally and physically much earlier than my species. It's one of the things that fascinates me about your people. Jackson grinned. Please to have impressed Tyla. So you don't think it's weird that I have a girlfriend at my age? Tyla laughed, ruffling Jackson's hair affectionately. Not at all, Jackson. I think it's wonderful that you and Lena have found each other. 
Young love is a beautiful thing, no matter what species you are. Just then, Marcus poked his head into the room, a mischievous glint in his eye. Hey, you two, how's the wedding planning going? Tyla stood up, sauntering over to Marcus with a coy smile. It's going very well, but I think I need a break. Care to join me upstairs for a little relaxation? Marcus grinned, pulling Tyla into his arms. I thought you'd never ask. Jackson made a face, covering his eyes dramatically. Ew, gross. Get a room, you two. Marcus and Tyla laughed, sneaking a quick kiss before heading upstairs hand in hand. As they disappeared around the corner, Jackson shook his head, a small smile playing at his lips. He was happy for his dad and Tyla, even if their public displays of affection sometimes made him cringe. The wedding day arrived, a beautiful sunny morning filled with the scent of blooming flowers and the sound of joyful laughter. Marcus stood at the altar, his heart bursting with love and pride as he watched Tyla walk down the aisle, a vision in a flowing white gown. Jackson stood beside his father, beaming with happiness. He couldn't believe this day had finally come, the day when their little family would officially become whole. But just as Tyler reached the altar, a loud commotion broke out at the back of the garden. Everyone turned to see a group of Tyler's relatives, their faces twisted with anger and disapproval. Stop this farce at once, Tyler's father bellowed, striding forward with purpose. Tyler, you cannot marry this human. It goes against everything our people believe in. Tyler's eyes flashed with defiance, her chin lifting proudly. Father, I love Marcus and he loves me. That's all that matters. Her father shook his head, unmoved. You would turn your back on your own kind, your own family for this, this alien? Jackson stepped forward, his hands clenched into fists. Hey, that's my dad you're talking about. And Tyla's part of our family now, whether you like it or not. Tyla's father glared at Jackson, his lip curling in disdain. Stay out of this, boy. This doesn't concern you. Marcus placed a hand on Jackson's shoulder, his voice calm but firm. Actually, it concerns all of us. Tyla, Jackson, and I are a family, and we will fight for each other no matter what. Tyla's father opened his mouth to argue, but was cut off by a sudden gasp from the crowd. Everyone turned to see Tyla's mother stepping forward, her eyes shining with tears. Enough, she said softly, her voice trembling with emotion. Can't you see how happy they are together? How much love there is between them? She turned to Tyla, taking her daughter's hands in her own. My darling girl, all I have ever wanted is for you to find joy and fulfillment in this life. And if Marcus and Jackson bring you that, then I give you my blessing. Tyla let out a sob of relief throwing her arms around her mother. Thank you, she whispered. Thank you for understanding. Slowly, the rest of Tyla's family began to come forward, offering their own words of apology and acceptance. Marcus and Jackson watched in amazement as the tension melted away, replaced by an atmosphere of love and unity. The ceremony continued, Marcus and Tyla exchanging vows and rings with tears of happiness streaming down their faces. As they sealed their union with a kiss, the crowd erupted into cheers and applause. The reception was a joyous affair, filled with laughter, dancing, and heartfelt toasts. Jackson watched with a full heart as his father and new stepmother twirled around the dance floor, their love for each other shining bright for all to see. As the night wore on and the guests began to depart, Jackson found himself alone with Lena, swaying softly to the music. He pulled her close, resting his forehead against hers. I love you, he murmured, the words feeling both thrilling and natural on his tongue. Lena smiled, her green eyes sparkling in the candlelight. I love you too, Jackson. Today was perfect. Jackson grinned, stealing a quick kiss. It was, but I have a feeling it's only the beginning of our adventure together. And as he held Lena in his arms, surrounded by the love and warmth of his newly expanded family, Jackson knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. Because that's what families do. Life settled into a blissful routine for the newly expanded family. Marcus and Tyla's love for each other seemed to grow stronger with each passing day, their bond deepening as they navigated the joys and challenges of married life together. One particularly memorable evening, Marcus arrived home from work to find Tyla waiting for him in the bedroom, a mischievous glint in her eye. She was wearing a sheer, lacy negligee that left little to the imagination, her blue skin shimmering in the candlelight. Welcome home, husband, she purred, sauntering over to him with a seductive sway of her hips. Marcus swallowed hard, his pulse quickening at the sight of his beautiful wife. What's all this? He asked, his voice rough with desire. Tyla smiled, wrapping her arms around his neck. 
I just wanted to show you how much I love you, she murmured, pressing her body against his. How much I appreciate everything you do for our family. Marcus groaned, capturing her lips in a searing kiss. They tumbled onto the bed together, hands roaming and clothes disappearing as they lost themselves in each other's touch. Later, as they lay tangled together in the afterglow, Tyla turned to Marcus with a soft, hopeful expression. Marcus, I've been thinking, what if, what if we had a baby of our own? Marcus's eyes widened, his heart swelling with love and excitement. Really? You want to have a child together? Tyla nodded, her eyes shining with emotion. More than anything, I love Jackson with all my heart, but I also long to experience the miracle of creating a life with you. Marcus pulled her into his arms, kissing her deeply. I would love nothing more than to have a baby with you, Tyla. Let's do it. Let's start trying. And so they did. For weeks, they made love with a newfound passion and purpose, pouring all of their hopes and dreams into each intimate moment. When Tyla finally confirmed her pregnancy, the whole family erupted in joy and celebration. Jackson was thrilled at the prospect of becoming a big brother, already making plans for all the things he would teach the new baby. But as the weeks passed and Tyla's belly began to grow, it became clear that this pregnancy would not be an easy one. She was plagued by constant nausea and fatigue, her body struggling to adapt to the demands of carrying a half-human, half-alien child. Marcus was beside himself with worry, hovering over Tyla and catering to her every need. He took time off work to be with her, determined to support her through every challenge. Jackson stepped up as well, taking on more responsibilities around the house and offering his own unique brand of comfort and humor to keep Tyla's spirits up. One afternoon, as Tyla rested on the couch, Jackson sat beside her, gently patting her swollen belly. Hey there, little alien baby, he cooed. I'm your big brother, Jackson. I can't wait to meet you and teach you all about the world. Tyla smiled, her heart melting at Jackson's sweet words. You're going to be an amazing big brother, Jackson. This baby is so lucky to have you. Jackson grinned, his chest puffing up with pride. And lucky to have you and dad too. We're going to be the best family ever. As the months passed and Tyla's due date approached, the challenges only seemed to increase. She developed a rare complication that put both her and the baby at risk, requiring constant monitoring and bed rest. Marcus was a wreck, barely sleeping or eating as he kept vigil by Tyla's side. Jackson did his best to be strong for his family, but the strain was taking its toll on all of them. Finally, in the middle of a stormy night, Tyla went into labor. Marcus rushed her to the hospital, his heart pounding with fear and anticipation. The delivery was long and difficult, with moments where it seemed like both Tyla and the baby might not make it. But through sheer determination and the skill of the medical team, a tiny, perfect baby girl was born just as the sun began to rise. Marcus wept as he held his daughter for the first time, marveling at her delicate features and the way her skin shimmered with a soft, iridescent glow. She's beautiful, he whispered, his voice choked with emotion just like her mother. Tyla, exhausted but overjoyed, reached out to stroke the baby's cheek. Welcome to the world, little one. We've been waiting for you. Jackson burst into the room, his face lighting up as he caught sight of his new sister. She's here. Can I hold her? Marcus carefully placed the baby in Jackson's arms, watching with pride as his son cradled her with a gentleness beyond his years. Meet your big brother, sweetheart. He's going to take such good care of you. In that moment, surrounded by the love and strength of his family, Marcus felt a sense of peace and completeness wash over him. They had been through so much together, had weathered storms and challenges that would have broken lesser bonds. But through it all, their love had only grown stronger, more resilient. And now, with this new little life to cherish and protect, Marcus knew that they could face anything the universe threw at them. As he watched Tyla and Jackson cooing over the baby, Marcus felt a rush of gratitude and wonder. This was his family, his heart and soul, and he would spend the rest of his life loving them, fighting for them, and building a future together. No matter what challenges lay ahead, they would face them as they always had, together, with unwavering love and unbreakable strength, because that was the true power of family, the magic that could overcome any obstacle and light the way through even the darkest of times. And as the first rays of sunlight streamed through the hospital window, illuminating the faces of his beloved wife, his brave son, and his perfect new daughter, Marcus knew that he was exactly where he was meant to be, home with the ones he loved, 
ready to embark on the greatest adventure of all. Five years had passed since the birth of Marcus and Tyla's daughter, Erica. The family had settled into a comfortable routine filled with laughter, love, and the occasional intergalactic diplomatic crisis. Jackson, now a strapping young man of 19, had just returned home from his first year at the prestigious Galactic Academy. He had grown into a brilliant and ambitious student with a mischievous streak that never quite faded. One evening as the family gathered for dinner, Jackson cleared his throat, a nervous grin on his face. So I have some news, he announced, his eyes twinkling with barely contained excitement. Marcus raised an eyebrow, exchanging a curious glance with Tyla. Oh, do tell, son. Jackson took a deep breath, his grin widening. I'm getting married. Tyla's jaw dropped, her fork clattering to her plate. What? To whom? When did this happen? Jackson laughed, reaching out to take Lena's hand. The red-haired beauty had been a constant presence in their lives. Her love for Jackson, never wavering. To Lena, of course. We've been planning it for months, but we wanted to wait until I was home to tell you in person. Marcus blinked, a slow smile spreading across his face. Well, that's wonderful news. Congratulations, you two. Tyla, still in shock, shook her head in disbelief. But, but you're so young. Are you sure you're ready for this? Jackson's expression softened, his love for Lena shining in his eyes. I've never been more sure of anything in my life, Tyla. Lena is my soulmate, my partner in every way. I know we're young, but when you know, you know. Tyla opened her mouth to protest, but Marcus placed a gentle hand on her arm. Honey, do you remember how young you were when you fell in love? Age is just a number when it comes to matters of the heart. Tila sighed, a rueful smile tugging at her lips. I suppose you're right. It's just, it's hard to believe our little Jackson is all grown up and getting married. Jackson grinned, his eyes sparkling with mirth. Well, believe it, because there's more. Lena and I are expecting a baby. This time it was Marcus's turn to choke on his drink, his eyes bulging in surprise. A baby? You're going to be a father? Jackson nodded, his chest puffing up with pride. Yep, and you're going to be grandparents. Tyla's hand flew to her mouth, tears of joy welling in her eyes. Oh, Jackson, this is, this is incredible. I'm so happy for you both. Erica, who had been watching the exchange with wide-eyed curiosity, tugged on Jackson's sleeve. Does this mean I'm going to be an aunt? She asked, her voice filled with wonder. Jackson laughed, scooping his little sister into his arms. Yes, Erica, you're going to be the best aunt in the whole universe. As the family embraced, their laughter and tears mingling together, Marcus felt a sense of profound gratitude wash over him. This was the life he had always dreamed of, the family he had fought so hard to build and protect. And now, with Jackson starting a family of his own, the circle of love was expanding, growing stronger and more beautiful with each generation. And that, in the end, was the greatest gift of all.